Okay, we have here today another integral from the MIT integration be 2024 regular season number 18. We have the integral from zero to one, square root of x to the eighth minus x to the sixth plus x to the fourth times square root of one plus x squared dx. I think there's definitely a few different ways we could simplify it. I think the first thing I want to notice though, you know, we've got an x and x to the fourth here that we could factor out of this. So I think I'll actually start with that. So when we rewrite this, if we factor out x to the fourth, and x to the fourth is inside the radical, then we're going to have an x squared in front. And then kind of just dividing by x to the fourth on each term, this is going to become x to the four. This one's going to be a minus x squared, and the last one's just going to be a plus one. And I think what I'll do with this is actually, let's just bring it all into one radical and write it like this. So I'm just, and I'm going to reorder it. I'll write this as x squared plus one, just trying to set this thing up. For this, I'm actually thinking of the sum of cubes formula. And we can actually, instead of, and we can actually be more specific and I can look at it as t cubed plus one. And the formula we have for this is we could factor this as t plus one times t squared minus t plus one. I'm just using t because I don't want to reuse x right now. And what I'm thinking is this right here, all this stuff looks a whole lot like what we have right here. It looks like really the same thing. The only difference is we have t instead of x squared here. So you kind of think of it like a substitution. If you just substitute into this t equal x squared, then if you do that here, this is exactly this. But if we do this on the left side as well, what's going to happen here is this is going to become x to the sixth plus one. So let's just take this value and put this into the radical. So when I do that, what's gonna happen? This becomes x squared, and this all becomes x to the six plus one dx. But then what I can do to set up a u substitution, instead of looking this at instead of looking at x to the six, let's look at this as x cubed squared. Because then if I take a u substitution here, it's gonna work well with x squared. So let's just see how this is gonna work. I want my u to be equal to x cubed here. I'll take a derivative, so d is gonna be three x squared dx. I have the x squared, I have the dx, I don't have the three. Let's multiply by three here, and then I'll multiply by one third just so I don't change it. And then we can just go ahead with the substitution, so we'll have one third in front. First, let's plug in one here, but one cubed is one. Take zero, plug in zero, zero cubed, of course, is zero. This is all gonna be du, so let's just look at the radical. So this is gonna transform into the square root of u squared plus one du. But now this integral here, I think we can do this with a trig substitution, but I think I'm just gonna need a little more space. Okay, now if what we have here inside the radical is u squared plus one, I wanna do my trig substitution using tangent. So let's just set u equal to tan of t. I'll take a derivative, so our du value is just gonna be secant squared t dt. And while I'm at it, let's just put together the value for u squared plus one. So u squared plus one, this is going to become with the substitution, this will become tan squared t plus one. But we have a trig identity for that. That's going to be the same thing as secant squared of t. But now actually, let's just include the radical in this. So let's get our value for the square root of u squared plus one. So take the square root everywhere, square root everywhere. The square root of secant squared t is actually going to be absolute value of secant of t. And I'll leave that for now, but one more thing I wanna do before I substitute is let's just get our value for t, taking the arctan on both sides. This is gonna become t equal to just arctan of u. So now we'll just go ahead over here, so we'll have our one third out front. Then first looking at one, evaluating arctan of one, that's gonna happen at pi over four. And then for our zero, let's look at arctan at zero. Lower bound's gonna become zero. Now for this whole thing here, we determine this is gonna be absolute value of secant of t, and then for our du value, that's gonna be secant squared t dt. But noticing our bounds, zero to pi over four, this is all in the first quadrant, so secant is always gonna be positive there, so I'm just gonna drop my absolute value here. And then multiplying secant t times secant squared t, we're just gonna have secant cubed of t. But then this here is a really common integral, so let's just use the formula on this for secant cubed t, and then we'll finish it off. Now, one thing I could do before we evaluate is we have this two in the denominator. Let's just factor that out. We'll just bring that outside and I can make this here one over six. Actually, one other thing I can do is we're just gonna need values for secant t and tan t for zero and pi over four. Well, first let's deal with the zero. So secant of zero, that's just gonna be one. And then tan at zero, that's gonna be zero. And then, and then let's see what happens at pi over four. Secant of pi over four, well, we know from cosine of pi over four is one over square root of two, so secant pi over four is gonna be square root of two. And then for tangent at pi over four, that's just gonna be one. So with that, we have everything we need. We're gonna have our one sixth out front here. 
and then we'll just kind of plug in. So secant pi over four, we're gonna have for the first part, square root of two, tan pi over four is gonna be a one here. And then we have plus natural log, again, square root of two, plus one, I'll drop my absolute value here. And then we're gonna minus evaluating at zero, secant at zero is one, but this is gonna be one times zero. So that part is going away there, plus natural log, and this is gonna become one plus zero. But natural log of one is just zero, so that part's going away. This part, this, and then this whole thing here at the end, this is all zero. So we just have this piece left. So putting this together for my final solution is we have one over six times square root of two plus natural log square root of two plus one, out of parentheses, and that's it. Okay, there you have it. It was kind of a grind, but not too bad. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.